ECMO or ECMO, which stands for extracorporeal membrane oxygenation, is a way of supporting patients with essentially a slimmed down version of the heart lung machine. Now, depending on how it is connected to the patient, it can help them if they have issues with the lungs specifically, the heart specifically, or both. Typically, patients receive one version of ECMO, which helps the heart if they are in cardiogenic shock. And, and that's a condition in which patients have so little blood flow going forward that their end organs, their kidneys, their liver, their lungs, their brain, uh, do not receive enough oxygen. This can be a sudden new event, like a heart attack can cause it, or pulmonary emboli, which are when clots plug up the arteries going into the lungs, things like that. Or it could be the culmination of years of worsening heart failure. And it just gets to a point where the organs are no longer working, the body has been trying to adapt and trying to maintain functionality and finally has to give out because the flow that it's receiving is not enough. When patients reach this point, the patient is so sick that it isn't just about supporting the heart anymore, it's about making sure that everything can work better as fast as possible that everything can improve as fast as possible. By hooking them up to essentially a slimmed down version of the heart-lung machine, we take over the work of the heart and the lungs and provide well oxygenated blood to all the organs of the body. In doing so, we can pretty quickly reverse the damage that's been done to many of the organs. Now, there can be irreversible injury if it's been happening for long enough or if it's severe enough but in many patients, we can at least give them a chance to recover. ECMO support typically is a therapy of last resort. Patients who are extremely sick because their heart and or their lungs are failing, if they reach a certain degree uh, that medications, ventilators, typical, more traditional support platforms aren't enough, the fallback option is to use ECMO. And this allows us to use a machine, use the ECMO machine to take over work that the heart and or the lungs would be doing. By doing so, we can help the organs in the body recover, at least somewhat, while the heart and the lungs are being treated. There is typically some underlying issue with regards to the heart and the lungs that will need a different type of therapy to actually fix, but ECMO support will keep the patient alive until such therapies can be done. The amount of time that patients remain on ECMO support really is determined by their underlying disease state as well as avoidance of complications from being on ECMO. If a patient has no other options, we will maintain ECMO support on patients for weeks. If patients are showing very slow recovery, but some recovery, and we want to give them more time, we have maintained patients on ECMO support for weeks, even several months in certain circumstances. The expectation is typically that patients who need it uh, need ECMO to support uh, poor heart function or cardiogenic shock. The expectation is that we would only need to keep them on ECMO for a few days to maybe a couple weeks until we pivot to a different type of therapy a different type of mechanical support possibly, or recovering them after a heart attack or in allowing the heart time to recover. When it comes to the lungs, when we support patients who are in respiratory failure with uh, that version of ECMO, those patients will often need several weeks to recover from their underlying lung injury. And so those patients typically on average will need to be on ECMO support for longer than those that need it for a weak heart. Um, but it all depends on their disease state and how quickly they recover. And then if they have complications from ECMO, we often will have to find alternatives which prove to be safer because the patients aren't tolerating ECMO.